Andy Crawford with MississippiSportsman.com. I am here with Will Reese of Natchez, who uh, on December 14th December killed, 14th. killed a uh, potential pending state record, a uh, typical buck with his bow. Um, Will, what did this thing gross out? Gross, it was 198 and a half. Okay, and, and what's the, the green score on the uh, net? It'll be 176 with some change. 176 with some change. Now, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the uh, current state record is about 167. Yeah, I 167 think. and 78, so, something like that. So, um, unless something dramatic happens, uh, this will be the, the, the new state record. Um, I, I can't imagine when it dries, it's going to lose uh, you know more than a few inches off yeah. of that, uh, that estimate. So, um, Sort of tell me about the hunt. You you were in Jefferson County. Um, you said you didn't know this deer was in the area. I did not know this deer was in the area. I hadn't ever had any pictures of him. Hadn't anybody ever seen him. Um, the one thing that drew me into the area was I found some big hookings or rubs. And I packed a climber in that evening. Um, I guess about 1.30, something like that. And eased in there and, and got on the rub line. And it was next to a big cypress break. And... Right past rub line, I picked up a scrape line. And I followed the scrape line a little ways, and I realized I needed to back up and get downwind of it. So I backed up, backtracked, come in downwind of the scrapes, and found a good tree to climb. And the wind it, the wind was just perfect. You know, it was blowing from the cypress break, and I downwind of the scrapes, and everything was going out. Okay. You know, the way I walked in. And I guess I've been there about 30 minutes, and I did a rattling sequence, um, just with some shed horns I got to use for rattling horns, and, mm -hmm. and they're, they're not real heavy main beam horn, they're, you know, more mediocre, like they give right. a more realistic sound to me. And did a, did a um, grunt sequence, you know, and used pretty much can, did some estrus okay. bleats, you know, finished it off. And I did that one time, and I can't remember if I did it two or three times. It, it, it wasn't a whole lot that afternoon. Um, had a doe and a yearling come in. They came in downwind from me. Right. And they was feeding on some hackberries to the left of me. And 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 you you thought about taking a shot. I actually that. thought about shooting the doe. You know, the yearling was big. You know, right. it was probably seventy five pound yearling. And and I chose not to. Um, it was a funny story. My dad told me that morning. I think my dad said, "If you don't quit shooting them does, you ain't ever gonna kill a big buck with your bow." So it's kind of ironic that that I let a doe go and then. This right. is what I got, so I'm sitting here wondering, well, maybe I shouldn't have shot them last however many, you know, right. over the years. Right. But, you know, back to the story, they, they winded me and they run off. And, you know, I said, well, you know, they downwind of me. They, they didn't spook anything. I stood up, and I guess that was about a quarter to five. And and I did another rattle sequence. And, you know, nothing hard, you know, but a little bit more than tickling right. the horns. So, did my grunt call did my can and put everything up you know and, and was sitting there i wasn't gonna call anymore you know would it get late like that and and i guess i guess about five o'clock man i caught a glimpse of a deer kind of to the southwest of me mm -hmm. and to my right and easing out of the cypress break and i put binoculars up and and i just saw what i saw was this side but it was just a glimpse you know i right. i couldn't tell what he was i mean it could have been a you know basket rack eight point it was just a quick glimpse and I didn't grunt or anything. I was just gonna let the deer do what he, what he was gonna do. Mm -hmm. About that time, I, I heard that he had turned to me and walked through like a, a little old bottom. You know, had a little water in it, not much, and I could tell he was coming to me. So, I mean, I was getting ready, and like I said, I didn't have any idea what he was yet. And I guess about 35 yards, I, I, I caught a glimpse of his horns and knew they were bigger than, than. You what know, I knew, you know, what I, basket. yeah, and you know, and I thought about just for a second, I thought about them hookings back there, and I said, this deer might, might be, you know, a shooter. Mm -hmm. And I, I really got ready then, hook, went ahead and hooked my release, and, and I saw that he was fixing to walk out of the cypress and the willow trees. So I unhooked my release and got my binoculars ready because, you know, we try to shoot nice deer. Right. Um, we had never shot none this night. And, and, and you told me that the, the general uh, rule on the, the leases is, is five and a half years. Yeah, deer. we shoot five-year-old deer, deer and older. Okay. And um, this one wasn't five, but <laughs> I didn't know that we'll, when we'll, I shot it. We'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the deer walked out from under the under a little old overhang and button wheelers or, or whatever it was and when i got my binoculars up i saw this side right here you know and saw that kicker right and and immediately knew he was a shooter and i said 165 170 but you gotta remember i didn't look at this or this right. or, or this main beam i just saw that right there right 
and the deer come straight to me, 13, 14 yards and stop, you know, which he was between me and the scrapes. You know, I got far enough away from the scrapes, downwind of them, that when he came in and checked them, I mean, he was perfect. He was right upwind from me. Right. And after he went and checked the scrapes, I just, he just, you know, just nibbled around on some grass or something and, and actually turned his head and I said, well, I better go ahead and shoot him now. And I drew and he didn't hear anything or, I mean, he just sat there calm and all. Um, Believe it or not, I was actually calm, and and that, that's not like I usually get just nervous, you know, like like I did when I was a kid, and 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 I anchored and I started aiming, and I had my pin tucked in tight behind his front left shoulder, mm -hmm. and and the deer, as soon as the release fired, the deer turned his front body to me. He didn't turn all the way quarter to me, okay, okay. but I don't ever like taking a quarter to you, any type of quarter to you right. shot. I don't take, and um, and when the release fired, you know I. I didn't know what I couldn't I couldn't trace my arrow and the deer ran out there about 40 45 yards and stopped and I'd gotten me another arrow knocked and I was going to try to shoot him again and I couldn't get a, a hold where I could get an arrow right. through so I was sitting there looking at my binoculars trying to pick out a um you know a, a exit hole because mm -hmm. the right side was to me then and and I couldn't and the deer did not act like he was hurt he, he didn't he didn't stumble he and, didn't stumble he didn't do nothing um, but I heard I heard the arrow hit him and hit him hard mm -hmm. okay. and and then, I don't know if you ever heard, but those raised broadheads when they open, they, they make a whack, okay. you know. So you knew, so you knew you had hit him. You yeah, I knew I'd hit him, okay. and um, and like I said, I got my binoculars up and I was glassing him real hard. He wasn't forty-five yards; it was just thick. And I could see his tail, boy. His tail just started twitching. Mm -hmm. And first thing I thought was gut shot, you know. And, okay. And the deer just loped off, looked like a big quarter horse went right back where he come from. There was a big cypress tree down in there, and when it uprooted. <laughs> It, it pulled a bunch of the the roots and, and a big ball of dirt up behind it. You know, everything stuck to the roots. And he went behind there, and, and I couldn't see him. But I realized he ran in there and stopped. Oh, and when he did that, I just started listening. And I heard what I thought, you know, was him laying down. Broke a stick. I mean, nothing. Right. He didn't crash or kick. or yeah, so you, didn't, you didn't hear him kicking no, and, and uh -uh. crashing or anything like that? Nope. And... And I sat there and I listened again and, you know, just kept listening mm -hmm. and, and I, th I thought I heard him just stretch out, you know, and never did hear the deer get up. So I sat up in the tree for probably another 45 minutes, an hour. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was good dark and, and I eased down out of the tree and I eased over where I shot him about 13, 14 yards from me and, and instantly right where I saw him, where I shot him at, there was a drop of blood. Right. I said, well, if I'd shot him in the guts, you know, I don't think yeah. there'd be a drop of blood right there. And I, I took my light and, and shined in the direction that he had, had, had left. Right. And there was a little old stream of blood going on over a log about the side of a basketball on right. his right side, you know, which would have been on his right side. So I just got my air, went back to the truck and examined my air, and, and it didn't smell like guts on it, you know. Um, had good blood on the, on the it, air? It was... It was kind of iffy looking. Okay. I shot the deer right where I was aiming, mm -hmm. you know, inch and a half behind that left shoulder. Mm -hmm. And he had just a little bit of angle where it would come out in his belly, okay. but where the liver was. Right. I mean, it was a fatal shot, but the, when, when, I, when I dress a deer out, that, that old belly fat and, and yeah. that meat on there, I guess it wiped most of the air oh, okay. clean. Okay. And, but I found some white hair on my shaft and some brown hair, and man, I went back to the house and I thought about it, and thought about it, and <laughs> and I I told my dad that I was gonna leave him overnight and just go back in the morning and try him, and I started thinking I ain't never had no luck doing that, <laughs> you know. I mean, I never had. It'd rain or it'd do something. Right. I called one of my buddies and he wanted to leave him overnight too, and I talked to him and. I was like, oh, man, you know, I'd go help you find a deer, you know, come on. And I told his wife, I never told him how big it was, but I told his wife that it was 165, 170, you know, oh, one of the biggest deer I've ever shot. I didn't know he was 198 and four eights. <laughs> but we come down there, and I mean, immediately picked up the blood trail, mm -hmm. oh, trailed him 85 to 100 yards, and 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 he was laying there stiff as a board. He, he, was, he was dead, you know, before. Um, a probably, while before I even climbed out of the tree. Right, right. And now, um, now, what was the first thing that you saw? I know your your buddy. Um, what was his Mackie. name? Mackie. I, I know Mackie saw it first. What What was the first thing that you saw? Uh, if I remember right, I think he was laying like this, mm -hmm. and I just seen this other kicker, and I could see these back kickers here and that main beam. But in the woods that night, it looked like his main beams were twenty seven or twenty eight <laughs> inches long. You know. <laughs> 
at all. I made a joke. Uh, like I said, I mean, I've, I've been lucky enough to kill some nice deer, nothing like this, but we went to drag him out and we grabbed hold of them horn. I told him, I said, man, it's screwing me all up. He said, what? I said, I'm used to dragging him by the back leg. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but it's you know we got him drug out and oh Mackie he's, he's killed some nice deer with his bow I mean, he killed a 200 inch deer in Kansas last year with his bow yeah. and um, he just looked at him real quick and said he's gonna grow from 185 and we got back up to skinning shed you know and I said look before you leave I said we're gonna score mm -hmm. and and he was adding the scores up and he kept going, guys, I'm coming up with a nine. <laughs> I said, huh? He said, I'm coming up with a nine. And we scored him out at 194 and something. Okay. And So they actually scored it bigger than than, than y'all did? Yeah. The, okay. Yep. Sure okay. did. And like I said, we, we, um, we got close, you know. But right. I didn't expect it to go up four inches neither. <laughs> I said, well, it's going to go down four inches right. if it does anything. Well, and that's that's normally people, uh, you know, when they score it out themselves, they, they overscored. And, and just just to be clear, it was uh, the Department of uh, Wildlife, Fisheries, and Parks that did the... Yes, or Chris rush. McDonald. Yeah, Chris oh. McDonald's. And, and so it this it's not an official score. It still has to uh, go through a 60-day uh, drying 60 period. 60-day drying period. Which, which is what, mid... It'll be uh, mid-February. Um, yeah. He'll come back and rescore and um, it'll be official. Man. That's right. That's right. And so, um, had, had, now, now, the other part of the story that, that I thought was as interesting as any of it was, again, the, the rule on the club is that you, you, you shoot a good, mature five-and-a-half-year-old yeah. deer. Mm -hmm. What did this deer age out at? Oh, he was three-and-a-half or four. <laughs> oh. You know, and that's just unheard of. Oh, I, I just can't. I think there's some exceptions right. to, to aging, you know, through the jawbone, sure. and, and I just don't see, you know, like I said, I ain't no professional nothing, but I don't see how a deer in three years can grow to this caliber. And now he was over 200 pounds. No, he weighed 210 pounds. 210 pounds. If he was a three and a half year old, I, I, I told uh, Will this when I first talked to him on the phone, that if he had just let it grow up, It'd have been a fine deer. Well, yeah. That's true, but I mean, if he come through and had a sign on the side of him and said, I'm two, don't shoot, he'd just been out of luck, you know? That's right, that's right. Well, well we appreciate you uh, sharing the story with us. Uh, we're going to have more pictures of the deer and, and the rack on uh, MississippiSportsman.com. We invite y'all all to come look at it. Um, obviously, we, we invite everybody to enter the uh, Nikon Deer of the Year contest that we're having there on the site. The, the links are on the front page. Uh, again, Will, we appreciate you uh, sharing the story, and we'll see y'all on the net. Thank you.